So, what exactly is Vision? Basically, every year, FRC's competitions include a game element where we have to precisely shoot or just place a game piece such as a ball or a gear. Now, drivers can do this manually, but often, time the driver spends aiming and precisely maneuvering the robot back and forth is time wasted. Moreover, often being able to score points with these game pieces during autonomous mode is crucial to being competitive. So how do we precisely control these game pieces automatically from anywhere on the field? The solution many teams opt for is a vision system, having the robot observe the field with a camera and determine what to do based on what it sees. And this is a solution FRC actually helps us to implement by placing certain markers on the field, as you'll see in a moment. So, somewhere on the field, the robot is going to take a picture like this and automatically say, this is where the goal is, and I have to aim exactly, say, 40 degrees to the right in order to make it straight in. That's what I'll be taking you through. I mentioned FRC making it easier for us, so I'll explain a bit further. Wherever FRC thinks we might want to use vision, like goals for example, they put down vision targets made of something called a retroreflective tape. Retroreflective tape has an interesting property where when light hits it, it sends the light back in exactly the same direction. It's like a mirror, but it works from any angle. So if we place a very bright flashlight right next to our camera and take a picture of retroreflective tape, you'll find that the tape is one of the brightest objects on the image. This is because all the light from the flashlight hit the retroreflective tape and then went right back towards the camera. Since the tape shows up so brightly on our image, we can more easily isolate it from everything else. So how do we isolate the vision target? First, let's go over a few terms. Exposure is the amount of time that our camera takes in light for an image. The camera opens its shutter, waits some time to gather light on its sensors, and then closes it again. By altering this exposure time, we can change how much light we take in from various objects for every frame. Since retroreflective tape returns so much light to our camera, we can turn down our exposure drastically and continue to see the tape on our image, while making everything else appear dark. You might have heard of RGB values for storing images, which stores each pixel as a combination of red, green, and blue values. Generally, these values are difficult to work with for this application. Two different colors might be the same hue, but a different brightness or saturation. RGB would store them as completely different colors. A different storage scheme, called HSV, stores hue, saturation, and value, which describe the colors we're looking at in a more useful format. The light coming from our light source will almost always have a fairly consistent hue, and thus the vision target will show up on our image with the same hue, though the brightness will vary with distance and angle. With HSV, we can look for that exact hue, or as with RGB, that hue would be difficult to identify. So, after we change our exposure so that most of the image shows up dark except for our vision target, we can start thresholding the image. When we threshold, we look through each pixel in the image, and if it doesn't satisfy some criteria, we turn it black. The goal of thresholding is to remove as many pixels as possible that aren't part of the vision target. So the best way to go about thresholding is to look at an image of the vision target as you're changing the threshold values, and analyze how the threshold affects it. We have to make sure that our thresholding values aren't messing with the target itself. If we turn up a value too high or too low, you might see that the target disappears from the image because of thresholding. We want to avoid this. The first thing we want to threshold is all pixels that don't fall within a certain range of hues. The hue the vision target shows up as is generally consistent, so we can make the range of hues we accept pretty small. Now I'm turning the hue values down and up so that we narrow the range of hues we accept until eventually uh, I see the vision targets disappear, at which point I turn it back a little bit so that we still see the vision targets in the threshold, and then we're done. After that, we can play around with what saturation and values the target generally has at different angles and distances, and threshold with those two parameters as well. So now I'm doing the same thing that I was doing for hue, but with saturation and value. So first I start with saturation, and I'm raising the saturation until I see that the vision target disappears. And then I turn it all the way back down, because I realized that it didn't really change the target's area much. Now I do the same thing for value that I was doing for saturation. So I turn it up a bit, and then I realize that nothing really happens after the first bit. So I turn it back down, then I turn the max value down, and it immediately makes the vision target disappear. So I turn it back up. So then I move the robot around to see if different distances or angles make the vision target disappear. 
and I see that it doesn't, so that means we're done thresholding. At this point, the only white pixels left in the image should be the pixels that constitute the vision target itself, and everything else should be black. However, in some cases, there's going to be extra white pixels that we can't remove through thresholding, and that's what the next step is for. Usually by now, we'll have a few white blobs in our image, one of which is the vision target. These blobs are called contours, and our next task is to filter out contours that don't meet some criteria. The specifics of this part varies by year because the exact shape of the vision target changes every game. That said, generally, we'll be filtering out contours that are too large or too small, and then we might filter based on the shape of the target. For example, the vision target for the outer goal in 2020 was this kind of U-shape. If we draw a rectangle surrounding the target, most of that rectangle is going to be black, so not much of it will be filled. There's another way we can filter contours, target fullness. Target aspect ratio, which is width divided by height, can also be used to filter contours, but remember that the aspect ratio of the target will be drastically different if you're looking at it at a different angle. So now we've hopefully isolated the exact contour of our vision target. What now? Well, now we have the location of the target on the image as a pixel coordinate, but we need to turn that into a real life angle. One way we can get the real life angle from the pixel coordinate is a linear approximation, where we assume each pixel makes up some constant number of degrees. Let's say the horizontal and vertical FOVs of the camera are theta x and theta y. Then if the image width is x and the height is y, then each pixel makes up theta x over x horizontal degrees and theta y over y vertical degrees. Now we take the pixel coordinate we want, the center of the vision target contour, let's say a comma b, and find its distance away from the center of the image. That's going to be a minus x over 2 and b minus y over 2. Multiply each of these values by angle per pixel, and that gives us the angle that the target is away from the camera, both vertically and horizontally. Now that we know the exact angle the robot needs to turn to look at the target, we have to be able to turn that exact angle very precisely. This will be the topic of the next video. We'll also cover the more precise way of getting angle from pixel coordinate, as the method we've just gone over it was only an approximation. See you next time.